What we're going to talk about this afternoon is something very familiar. Even those who don't read the Bible knows it. It is a story that has been published in children's books, made into beautiful cartoons, and um, there are cafes, restaurants named after it because of its familiarity. There has even been a blockbuster movie that has been made out of it, featuring the hunk Russell Crowe, Crow, Crow. Cinematography was perfect. The story, imperfect. <laughs> it was very far from what the Bible had to say. But nonetheless, they found this story worthwhile to be investing millions on it just to be able to see it. The story of Noah that is featured in Genesis chapter 6, 7, and 8. Why it's a saving flood? When we, see, when we say flood, we know how deadly, dangerous it can be. It does not only destroy property, but it also destroys lives. Floods are very real to us. We live in Marikina. Kami po ay naging biktima ng, ng Bagyong Ondoy. And I guess a lot have already heard stories of Yolanda. But the story of the saving flood is something that is very familiar to all of us. As I've mentioned, even those who don't know the Bible or read the Bible knows there are representative stories. They say that there's about 250 to 300 variations of the stories. In certain tribes, they would have a different take on the story. But it remains the same. There is a deadly flood that happened, and it was because of the wickedness of men. And one thing that is very cute about all stories that, that, that has been transferred through generation is that there were always animals going into a boat. Two by two, they would always go. And cinema, the, the cinema would really um, ride on this because it is beautiful to look at. I will start with chapter 6 of Genesis, but I hope you'll read the first part because I will start with uh, verse 5. With this point, with this sobering truth, with this one message that I hope all of you will be able to take home and agree and be able to study and learn from more, that apart from God's intervention, there can be no redemption. Because salvation, that's God's work. It is never man's work. We cannot do it on our own. God has always have to play His role that is intervening into our messed up life just to be able to redeem us. Because apart from God, who designed the whole story of redemption right from the start of creation up until the end of Revelation, God's, redemption, God's intervention should always be there if we want redemption to happen. Genesis chapter 6, starting with verse 5. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. Obviously, God is always, has always remained watchful over His creation. Genesis chapter 1 shows us the creation of the world. Can you imagine six chapters down the road? From creation time, when God said, let there be light. After the command, what did God say? After the command, let there be light. And God said, there was light. And after the light, pagkatapos makreate ng light, ang sabi ni God, it is good. Right? Let there be waters in the skies and waters in the seas. Let there be light. Let there be the sun, moon, and stars. Let there be land. And God said, it is good. Upon the creation of man, when Adam was, was made out of the breath of God, what did God say? He could not stop himself, but utter the words, it is very good. From that time on, until chapter 6, when God said that everything that He has created is good, if not very good, 
don't you come to wonder why here God in his observation has noted that human man has become wicked the description was that he was totally bad he was so wicked that God's attention was already taken Napuna na, na ni Lord man has become very wicked and he saw that everything they thought even those that he has already imagined and look at these words were consistently and totally evil God was saying all of the thoughts and the deeds of man has turned from so far away from how I have designed it to be from the purpose by which I have created man is consistently and totally evil he goes how can something so beautifully done to the declaration of God that is good six chapters down the road six chapters pa lang ah ganun na kasama ang tingin ng Diyos sa tao when Martin Luther read this it was more one of the reasons that propelled him to be able to share the gospel more his rival then Erasmus said that to man there is a certain there is there is a small tinge of good sabi niya hindi ang tao meron pa natitirang kabutihan yan kaya kaya niya on his own to turn away from his sin and go to God on his own choose Christ choose salvation with Christ but no Martin Luther said no man is sinful the sinful nature of man is always present that on his own he will never he will never be able to choose God on his own why is it possible because God has already been there he started it he intervened he started the, the plan the chance for redemption and salvation for mankind kaya sa obserbasyon ng Panginoon no man is completely consistently totally evil ouch ang sakit diba to be told that you are consistently evil you are totally evil and then the Lord said so the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth when you say God was sorry does it mean nagsisisi siya at nagkamali siya no because we know God is perfect he does not make any mistakes God never made a mistake he is never sorry because he made a mistake he is sorry because as, as the next line said yung sorryness ni God we're just putting emotion human emotions on what God was feeling it said that it broke his heart. Parang mga magulang, the parents. Diba if your children do something wrong, kahit sabihin mo pa sa mga, sana ibinalik na lang kita sa tiyanko. Sana hindi na kita ipinanganak. But no, that's just lip service. In reality, it just breaks our heart if they're doing something that's wrong. And that was what God was feeling. He's not sorry that he made a mistake in creating man. He was sorry because it broke his heart that man was being so bad that every thought man had was all evil and the Lord said in his decision his own decision he said I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth he wanted humankind he wanted every living thing wiped out that means gone forever you're not going to see it anymore that was the description here he said I will wipe the human race that I have created yes I will destroy every living thing all people large and small animals that scurry along the ground but he said even the birds of the air pastor Pam wala nang look at the birds of the air si Papa niya. he said I am sorry I even made them he repeated the statement again but here enter Noah into the scene because Noah found favor in the Lord some translation would say favor was translated as grace and mga kapatid this is the first time 
that that word ever came into the picture. That was the first time that grace came out. This is the first time that grace is given as a word. Although when Adam and Eve sinned, they were given grace. They were just driven out of Eden instead of being, being killed and being thrown into hell. That's grace. And so Noah found favor in the Lord. And then the description of who Noah is was said. Noah was a righteous man and the only blameless person living on the earth at that time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Now, let me ask you a question. Did Noah find favor in the Lord because Noah was blameless and righteous? Yes or no? No. Why? Kaya nga ganun yung arrangement. Eh. Look, at, look at the wisdom of the Bible. Noah found favor in the Lord. That was first. Even before he was righteous or blameless. Because otherwise, we could have bought our way to salvation. It's the same as salvation. We are saved. That's why we do good works. We don't do good works in order to be saved. Right? Noah found favor in the Lord. Not because he was righteous and blameless. He was righteous and blameless because of the favor that God gave him. As we get to know God closer, as we get to know Jesus closer, we become more refined. Diba? We don't get angry so easily. We've changed. We've been refined. Naging pino na po tayo. Kaya ka mag-anak na namin kayong lahat. That is what Moses was saying here. That since Noah found favor with the Lord, he has become righteous and blameless. And mind you, he's the only one that God found to be righteous and blameless at that time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Abraham was a friend of God. Enoch, yung lolo po ni Noah, and Noah walked with God. Diba? And in one of their walks, puro jalan-jalan sila, sabi ni God kay Noah, ni-reveal niya yung plan niya. Since BFF sila, habang sila ay siguro nagja-jogging silang dalawa, sabi niya, Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures. Huh? Sabi siguro ni Noah, Lord, living creature ako. Diba? For they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Huh? Lord, I live on earth? Can you imagine, imagine with me, how Noah felt when God was revealing this to him? But Noah never questioned. He was just walking along with God, listening, hearing him out. And then, here is God's intervention coming in. When he tells Noah, build an ark from gopher wood. They say that gopher wood is like cypress. This is the first time and the last time gopher wood is going to ever appear in the Bible. So God said, build an ark of gopher wood. Do we remember the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant, when it was built, the instructions were also very clear. But the Ark of the Covenant is nothing more than a box. Because an ark is a box. It is not a ship. It is not a boat. If you will look at your Bible, I think ang nakalagay dyan, build a boat. I changed it, I made it build an ark because I wanted to picture to you how, what it really was. God was nothing more asking Noah to build a box because that wasn't going to be a cruise ship. ship. It was not going on a cruise. If you read on to the instruction, it was not going to have a rudder. It was not even going to have a steering wheel because Noah was not going to drive it. Noah was not going to go on a, on a cruise on the different uh, shores, on the different seas. No, it was going to be, it was going to have another purpose. So he said, make the ark out of gopher wood, waterproof it in and out, then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. The description of the ark was so precise, na parang, Parang naka-drawing na sa plano when God was giving the instruction to Noah. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Imagine with me, a 30-story foot building 
na inihiga sa mga arkitekto natin, tama ba? Ganun daw po ang haba ng ark. The ark can fill 550 railroad cars. Train. Train cars. Railroad train cars. Ganun po siya kalaki. Can you imagine in the mind of Noah, ah, uh, Lord, what am I going to do with that? That's huge. That is very huge. And he said, leave an 18-inch opening. The description was just so on point. Put a door on the side, build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. God was just giving him instructions, right? No reason why, no purpose until verse 17 when he goes, Look, I am about to cover the earth with flood. Huh? Flood? Ano yun? Because during this time, the weather was perfect. God did not introduce rain yet. Much more flood. So to Noah, what is a flood, Lord? I don't know what it is. When we built our house in Marikina, what my father did was up sa road level, nagpatambak, so they put filling on our property three meters high from the road. So imagine, three meters high. At the back po, so there's three meters already. He added another three meters. So totally, it's about six meters high. When Ondoy came, I was so shocked. The whole village will have to be flooded for our road to, be, to have any flood waters. That was how high our, our, our place was. But when Ondoy happened, my sister was crying to me on the phone. And for days, she was so depressed. And I couldn't identify why. So I had to go back to the Philippines. I had to check on her. And it was then that I realized why. Floodwaters came into our house short of one foot from the ceiling of our ground floor. But coming from Singapore, I couldn't comprehend what it was. And that was what exactly Noah would have been feeling. Lord, ano yung flood? How will you destroy every living thing with a flood? And everything on earth will die. So to Noah, he could not comprehend what flood waters were all about, much more the destruction of the world brought about by it. But God had a commitment to Noah when he said, I will confirm my covenant with you. So the instruction to him was, Go enter the boat with your wife and your children when that time happens. Because apart from God's intervention, there can be no redemption. Noah would not have been saved from the flood if God did not instruct him to do this. If God did not tell him, build the ark, Noah, that will be your salvation from the flood. God needed to tell Noah, Noah, build the ark this way. This is how big it should be. This is how how it should be done. There's star, there's waterproofing all over. There's only a small window. Because then I can destroy the world with flood. Verse 17 and 18, the instruction further given to Noah was this. Take every kind of animal, male and female. This is where questions arise. Sabi nila, because during that time, there's about a million species of animals. So male and female, two million in the, in the ark. So people would say, that's impossible. That's not possible. That's not true. That's why the story of Noah has always been told to be a myth. It can never be true that all of these huge animals, the elephants, the bears, the lions, the hippopotamus, the giraffe, they cannot all fit into the ark. Pero alam niyo po ba? When we average thou all the size of the animals, on the average, they will only be as big as sheep. If you average them, ah, siyempre, may maliliit, may malalaki, di ba? So if you take the average, they will just be as big as a sheep. And there can be 150,000 sheep that they can be accommodated in the ark. And when scholars were reviewing, they said, kasha siya sa ark. It can very well fit in the ark. So the Noah story is not a myth. 
It is real. It happened. The instruction follows. Pairs of every kind, birds, animals, every kind of small animal on the ground was repeated, will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take them on board with enough food. He was not only going to feed his family. He needed to feed the animals. Sabi nga, there was this kid daw who asked, how did they clean the ark? Because when the animals would poop, how will they clean it? And Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. Noah's obedience was perfect, exact, to the exact measure. He never debated with God. Lord, two stories na lang, masyado malaki yung three stories. Lord, pwede bang 300 feet na lang, wag na 450. But you know that the dimensions of the ship given, no other ship has been made to surmount the size of the ark until the 1900s. And when was the ark built? The perfection of the size of the ark was never made in duplicate. The Titanic, they tried to duplicate it at that time. Noah did everything exactly perfect. Noah's obedience was perfect. Noah's obedience was immediate because as soon as the instructions were given, he ran off scurrying and doing all. Nagputol ng, ng ano, nagharvest ng gopher wood. He, he, he cut them up. Hindi tulad natin, di ba? Mga anak ko, kanina nga, example ko. When we call our children, yeah, we call them again. Bawa. Easy boy, yeah. Example lang easy, ha? This is not you. <laughs> easy boy, yeah. Easy boy, yeah. But they're not moving, right? They're just there. Yeah lang sila ng yeah. When the Lord commanded, He obeyed. And the obedience was acted upon. He did something and He obeyed everything exactly as God commanded him. And when everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, Noah, go into the boat. All your family, for among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. Wow. The ark was built for about 120 years. Impossible that his neighbors would not see what he was doing. It was such a humongous uh, object to be missed out. I'm sure dadating si kumparing Jose. Paring Noah, anong ginagawa mo? Pare, I'm building an ark because the Lord will destroy the earth with flood. Aganon, ah, okay, they just walk away. 120 years. And Peter said that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So that means he would proclaim what he was doing. He would share with people, this is the ark that God was asking me to build to save us from the floods. Come join me, help me. But for 120 years, can you imagine the pain in Noah's heart? 120 years siyang nagsashare? And nobody was saved. Not even his mother or father. Not even kuya or ate, si kumari, si kapitbahay. Wala. Kaya we can never tire out. We cannot say, Naku, Sister Barry, dalawampung taon ko na pong pinagpapray ang asawa ko. Pasaway pa din. 120 years na ba? Di ba? Kapitbahay ko po, chismis pa rin ang chismis sa akin. 120 years na ba? God said, among all the people, you alone are righteous. Don't tire out, mga kapatid. Keep on sharing the gospel. Keep on proclaiming the righteousness, righteousness that comes from God. Keep on sharing what God has done in your life. Because when that time comes, ayaw natin i-declare that you are the only one who is righteous. I could, I could just so very well feel the pain in Noah's heart 
when he was the only one found righteous. Seven days from now, God said, I will make the rain pour down the earth and it will rain 40 days and 40 nights. Seven days, Noah's family was cooped up in the ark. Wala pang rain. Wala pang rain. I can imagine Mrs. Noah starting to nag already. No ba? Nasaan ba rain? Sabi mo ulan. Diba? Sabi siguro ni Ham, Seth, and Japheth, Daddy, where's the rain? Hindi, may asawa na po sila. Hindi na sila ganun magsalita. But seven days they were there. That was the test of even more longer patience for Noah. But on the seventh day, indeed, when Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky, never before imagined, never before happened, never before thought of. Rain and rain waters did not only come from the skies, but there were like fountains of water coming from underground. That was how much water was being, being uh, emitted from the earth. And I can imagine all the people outside, what would they have thought? Yung barko, yung ark ni paring Noah, takbo kayo doon. Too late. Too late. So Noah's family went into the ark. Animals, two by two, went inside. Male and female, they went into the ark as God commanded. And then the Lord closed the door behind them. Noah didn't close the door. It was God who decided that this is it. God in his goodness cannot defy himself as holy. He cannot just sit around and watch the sinfulness, the wickedness, the evil ways of man. He needed to do this because although God is good, he is just. He needs to do this. We do not have any right to close the door on anyone as far as salvation is concerned. Ang just lang po ang pwedeng magsara ng pinto. No matter how bad or how mean the things people have done to us, we do not have any right to close the door on them as far as salvation is concerned. Only God can. The Lord closed the door behind them. And do you know that the days of Noah was used by the Lord Jesus Christ to explain and depict his return? There will be judgment. That is a, that is a, a given. That is a non-negotiable thing. In Ma and Matthew wrote, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in the days of Noah. What were the days of Noah like? In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets. Is there anything wrong with that? They were having parties and weddings right up to the time when Noah entered his boat. Everything was business as usual. But they did not have any time for God. They never listened. No proclamation, no amount of declaration, no matter how huge the ark being built was, the people did not make, they did not make time for God. It was business as usual and sinfulness to the nth power. Violence was bad. Sexual perversion was there. If you read the first part of chapter 6, you, it will describe there what kind of sexual perversion was happening in the earth. Tayo ngayon, diba? I'm not even describing today's time. I'm describing Noah's time. Is there a parallel? Are we depicting Noah's time today? Is it business as usual? Minsan sasabihin, basta wala ako inaapakan na tao, okay lang. Basta masaya, happy, happy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Up to the time that Noah entered the boat, people didn't realize what was going to happen. Because nobody listened. Noah's proclamation was there, but nobody cared to stop and listen. And this is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. He will come 
He will redeem us. He will take us back in His arms. Pero kamusta po tayo? God is the one who opened the way for salvation, giving His one and only Son. His one and only Son. His cherished Son. He needed to intervene to give man His redemption. He needed to come to be able to give us salvation. Because apart from God's intervention, there can be no redemption. So what do we do? Heed God's call. His calling. There are so many signs around. You've heard the gospel time and again. You know the gospel. You've read the Bible back and forth. You've heard so many speakers say, God is coming back. Jesus is going to claim his own. Jesus is going to claim his own. Judgment is going to happen. So bago po kayo malungkot lahat, please take out your piece of paper. First drawing, draw an ark. After that, draw two people in the ark or on the ark. Next, draw people outside the ark. All right. Now, let me ask you this question. Draw yourself. In all honesty, where are you as far as the ark is concerned? Are you in the ark or outside the ark? Or floating around somewhere in the ark? Or you're not sure? Wala pong middle ground. It's just in the ark or outside the ark. We've been always present in church. Sunday after Sunday we come. We attend our koinonia. Where is our surety? Where does it lie? I hope we are all in the ark. Jesus is the ark of our salvation. That is what the writers, the apostles have, have written. He is the ark of our salvation and there is no way to be saved apart from Him. If you are not sure where you are, whether you're inside the ark or outside, please approach one of your pastors, approach your koinonia leaders. If you need any clarification, any clarity as to where you are as far as the ark of salvation is concerned, Please do approach your ates, your kuyas. We're here. We'll be able to answer that. But most especially, there are still a lot of people outside the ark. Sister Joy will come and sing. And may this be the prayer of your heart. That as people come to need the Lord, we will be there to respond and share the salvation that we have received. We see the days of Noah here in our midst, Lord God. Forgive us if we have just not taken notice or if we have ignored it altogether. Then we become a party to the sin, Lord God. Help us, Father, to make a stand against sin. Help us, Father, to live an upright life for you. And we thank you for the gift of salvation. May you be praised in our very life, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Every day they pass me by I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed who knows where On they go through private pain Live in fear to fear Left to hide their silent cry only Jesus He is. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, 
He's the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize people need the Lord.